people who are in the middle of their careers get the skills they need to get the job they want that gives them a career for the 21st century that gives them real economic security, that gives them a good job with better take-home pay so they can provide for their families. We need to clean up our education system. We need to make sure that we don't feed the bureaucracy that we, we give people the choice and the resources they need to go to the best school, to get the best skills they need to get their job, to get the right, and the right path. You know, we also have to recognize that about 95% of the world's people live outside this country. And so if we want good take-home pay and good jobs, we need to grow more things and make more things in America and sell them overseas. Yeah. That means we need trade that works for us. We need to open up markets. We need to hold countries accountable when they try to take our jobs and take our property and our intellectual property. We need trade that works for us. You know, another thing, and I gotta tell you, you cannot grow this economy if you do not realize that most of our jobs in this economy come from small businesses. Yeah. That's right. We need to small businesses. We need to make sure that small businesses, when they look forward, when they're taking a risk, we need to know that, that the government's not going to pull the rug out from under them. Talk to a small business person today. Talk to a manufacturer. Talk to somebody who's just hanging on, hoping they don't have to lay off the next round of people. What do they see? Regulation after regulation after regulation coming from Washington. They have no idea what it's going to cost them. They're worried about going forward because of all these hidden costs. And then they see our president, who already passed a law, who's promising in law that the top tax rate on our successful small businesses in America goes to about 40%. That one tax only pays for 8% of his proposed deficit spending. So this idea, look, overseas, which where I come from means Lake Superior. <laughs> we both live near Canada, right? The Canadians, they got this figured out. Other countries had this figured out. The Canadians lowered their taxes on all their businesses to 15%. And President Obama wants our tax rates and our, on our businesses, our successful small businesses, our job creators go to above 40%. When we tax our job creators at much higher tax rates than our foreign competitors tax theirs, then when we lose, we've got to get right with the idea that our jobs come from these successful small businesses. We don't want to tax them more. We don't want to right. regulate them more. We want them to hire more people. Yeah. And none of this is going to work. No business is going to be confident to take that risk to hire people to advance people, to give people promotions, to give people raises, to give them job security if they see their government borrowing and spending like it is. We can't keep borrowing 36 cents of every dollar our government spends. We can't keep the Federal Reserve doing what it's doing. We cannot keep looking our children in the eye knowing that we're going to give them a diminished future because we're spending their money today. Right. It's a very simple idea. Mitt Romney and I are going to bring it to Washington. We have got to stop spending money we don't have. We must get this, we must get this, get this balance budget. We must get this debt under control. This debt it not only hurts our economy today, with the threat of higher interest rates, with the threat of a losing dollar, with the threat of much higher tax rates, we know without a shadow of a doubt that we're giving the students here at Pinkerton Academy, our children and our grandchildren, a lower standard of living, a diminished future. We've never done that in this country before. You know, my dad, he said a number of things, and a couple of them really stuck with me. Number one, he always would say to me, son, you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. And you know what? President Obama has become part of the problem, and Mitt Romney is the The other thing he said is in this country, every generation of Americans fixes their problems so that they can leave the next generation better off. That's the American legacy. 
And for the first time in the history of our country, we know that if we stick with these same failed policies of the last four years, we will guarantee that our children get a diminished future. We cannot allow that to happen. It is our moral obligation to save the American dream for our children. Right. And our this is why we need leadership. Take a look at Mitt Romney's record. Take a look at his history. Take a look at the man he is. And then you will know that this is the kind of man we need to lead us. You too, Paul. Mitt Romney, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Mitt Romney knows firsthand what it takes to grow the economy, to grow businesses, to create jobs. He's helped create tens of thousands of jobs. And by the way, being successful in business, that's a good thing. We want successful business people. This is the kind of experience we need. He's a man who has a history of taking tough challenges, turning around difficult organizations, and making them work. The Olympics has one great example of that. But you just know, living here in the Granite State, just over the border in Massachusetts, that is not a ruby red Republican state. <laughs> this is a Republican who is governor of a Democratic state. 87% of the legislators he served with in the, who were in the legislature were Democrats. Did he demonize and demagogue and divide? No. No, he treated people with respect. He reached across the aisle without compromising principle, and he balanced the budget without raising taxes. That's the kind of <laughs> Under President Obama, household income, families in America, have gone down by more than $4,000 over the last four years. The middle class is shrinking and falling behind. Under Mitt Romney, when he was governor of Massachusetts, household income went up $5,000. Look at what President Obama did on the budget. Nothing, except borrow and spend. And as a result of the president's advocation of leadership, as a result of seeing the most predictable economic crisis in our country's history and not fixing it, our credit rating was downgraded for first time in our history. When Mitt Romney was governor, the credit rating of his state was upgraded. That's the kind of change we would get to Mitt Romney. We need to tackle our nation's challenges before they tackle us. We need to save and strengthen Medicare and Social Security, and we're putting the ideas on the table on how to do that. We're not going to try and scare seniors. We're going to save these benefits for seniors and for my generation so that these promises are kept. We believe in a strong national defense, and we don't agree with the president's reckless and devastating defense cuts because we believe in peace through strength. We also believe, and in the good career of that state, we know this to be true. We want to be in control of our own health care, and in order to do that, yeah. we have to be in control of our own health The choice is clear. We can either stick with the failed policy of the last four years for the next four years, which gives us a stagnant economy and fosters government dependency, or we can fix these problems, bring the leadership that we are sorely lacking, and have that dynamic, growing economy that produces opportunity, upward mobility, and self-sufficiency, and economic growth. Higher take-home pay, a stronger middle class, getting people out of poverty, back to the middle class, and growing economic security. This is doable. This is right in front of us. We can do this. Yeah. You know, this election is not just about these material issues. This election is about the fiber of our society. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's this election is about is. the kind of people we're going to be, the kind of country yep. we're going to have. Yeah. This country is an idea. That's, right. that, that's something we can never forget. It's not New Hampshire to California or Florida to Wisconsin. It's not just a nation with a flag. It's the only nation founded on an idea. 
That idea is very precious, but that idea can slip away from us if each generation doesn't defend the idea. Right. The idea is very precious. The Declaration of Independence says it better than anybody can say it. Our rights come from nature and nature's God, not from government. Our founders secured this, and every veteran since has put on the uniform to defend that idea so we can live in peace and freedom. And we thank them for what they've done to keep up this country. That's why we have to win. That's why we're going to win. Winston Churchill said it best. The Americans can be counted upon to do the right thing, but only after they have exhausted all other possibilities. <laughs> I think that's where we are. We are at that fork in the road. We have a choice to make. Mitt Romney and I are giving you the choice. It is a very clear choice of two different futures. And you know what? It is not too late to get this right. It is not too late to turn this economy around. It is not too late to secure for our children the promise of America that our parents secured for us. We can do this. We can get this together. We can put this together. And together we can get this done. Because you know what, Granite Staters? You have an enormous responsibility and you have an enormous opportunity. A handful of states will settle this. You understand that. You're the Granite State. You've had presidential candidates in your kitchens. <laughs> You're used to this. But that's why you know the responsibility you have. You have a responsibility to talk to your fellow citizens. To get those people that liked the promise of hope and change four years ago, but are demoralized now, to show them we have a better path, we have better ideas, because we're going to reapply our founding principles. <laughs> we are not going to stop the tough issues. We are going to lead. Get around and you're trying to spend the next four years blaming other people who's going to take responsibility. <laughs> Let's get this done.